If you stay away from problems and noise, turn off the light and put on an earphone, you will have done yourself a favor. Let's begin. The Haunted Forest, a terrifying tale of survival and the supernatural in World War II. The year was 1944 and the war raged on. Our unit had been marching for days through the dense forest, trying to reach our destination before the enemy could ambush us. The trees loomed tall on either side of the narrow path, their branches clawing at the sky like skeletal fingers. The silence was unnerving, broken only by the crunch of boots on gravel and the occasional rustle of leaves. We were all on edge, knowing that at any moment we could come under fire. But little did we know that something far more sinister lurked in those woods, something that would haunt us long after the war was over. This is the story of our journey through the haunted forest. Chapter 1. The Strange Occurrence We had been marching for what felt like days, the dense forest never seeming to end. The silence was deafening, the only sounds being the occasional rustle of leaves and the crunch of boots on gravel. We were all on edge, knowing that at any moment we could come under fire. But as we trudged on, something strange began to happen. The forest seemed to come alive with a low murmur, a sound that grew louder with each passing moment. We all stopped in our tracks, our eyes darting around in confusion. It was as if the trees themselves were whispering to each other, their leaves rustling with an eerie rhythm. I felt a shiver run down my spine, a sense of foreboding settling in the pit of my stomach. None of us dared to speak, afraid of breaking the strange spell that had fallen over us. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the murmur stopped. The forest fell silent once more, the only sounds being our own heavy breathing. We all looked at each other, unsure of what to make of the strange occurrence, but we knew one thing for certain. Something was not right in these woods. Chapter 2. The Unsettling Night As night fell, we set up camp in a small clearing. We had all been on edge since the strange occurrence earlier that day, and none of us were keen on spending the night in this haunted forest. But we had no choice. We needed to rest before we could continue our journey. As we settled in for the night, a thick fog began to roll in. It crept along the ground, obscuring our vision and making it difficult to see more than a few feet in front of us. The sound of our own breathing echoed eerily through the mist, and I felt a sense of unease settling over me once again. We had set up our tents in a circle around the campfire, but as the night wore on, we all huddled closer together. Every snap of a twig or rustle of leaves had us on high alert, our weapons at the ready. And then, just as we were starting to relax, we heard it. A low moan, almost like a human cry. We all froze, our eyes darting around in the darkness. The moan grew louder, more desperate, and then it was joined by another, and another. Soon, the forest was filled with the sound of mournful cries, and we all knew that we were not alone in these woods. We spent the rest of the night huddled together, our nerves frayed and our hearts racing. None of us slept, each of us waiting for the dawn to break and for us to continue our journey through this haunted forest. Chapter 3. The Disappearing Soldier As the sun began to rise, we packed up our camp and set out on the trail once again. The fog had dissipated, but the forest was still shrouded in an eerie silence. We were all on high alert, our senses tuned to any sign of danger. As we walked, I noticed that one of our soldiers, Private Jenkins, was no longer with us. I asked the others if they had seen him, but they all shook their heads. We searched the area but found no sign of him. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. We were all shaken by the sudden disappearance of one of our own. It felt like the forest was swallowing us up, one by one. We continued on, each step feeling heavier than the last. It was as if the weight of our fear was dragging us down. And then, as we were rounding a bend in the trail, we saw him. Private Jenkins was standing in the middle of the path, his back to us. We called out to him, but he didn't move. 
We approached him cautiously, and when we got close enough, we saw that something was terribly wrong. Jenkins was pale and unresponsive, his eyes fixed on something in the distance. It was as if he was in a trance. We tried to shake him out of it, but he wouldn't budge. We had no choice but to carry him along with us, hoping that he would snap out of it eventually. But as we continued our journey through the haunted forest, we knew that something had changed in Jenkins. He was no longer the same man he had been before, and we were all starting to wonder if we would ever make it out of these woods alive. Chapter 4 The Whispers in the Wind As we walked, the forest seemed to close in around us, the trees looming taller and thicker than ever before. The path we followed was overgrown, and we had to push our way through the foliage. But as we did, we began to hear something strange. Whispers in the wind, words that we couldn't quite make out. At first, we thought it was just our imaginations playing tricks on us. But the whispers grew louder, more insistent, until we knew that something was trying to communicate with us. We strained to hear what was being said, but the words were still just out of reach. It was then that we noticed Jenkins was muttering to himself. His eyes glazed over. We moved closer to him, trying to hear what he was saying. At first, it sounded like gibberish, but as we listened more closely, we realized that he was repeating the same words over and over again. The forest speaks, he whispered. It has a message for us. We were all unnerved by his words, but we couldn't deny the strange whispers that seemed to surround us. It was as if the forest was trying to tell us something, to warn us of the dangers that lay ahead. We pressed on, our senses on high alert. The whispers grew louder, more frantic, and we knew that something was coming, something that we were not prepared for. Chapter 5 The Attack of the Unknown Creature The whispers in the wind grew louder, and we could hear something moving in the trees. We all tensed, weapons at the ready, and waited for the attack, but nothing came. Suddenly, there was a rustling in the bushes, and we turned to face it. But what emerged was not what we were expecting. It was a creature unlike anything we had ever seen before. It was tall and slender, with skin as white as snow. Its eyes glowed a bright red, and its fingers were long and sharp, almost like talons. It moved with an unnatural grace, as if it was not bound by the laws of gravity. We opened fire, but our bullets seemed to have no effect. The creature moved impossibly fast, dodging every shot with ease. It seemed almost amused by our feeble attempts to defend ourselves. It lunged at us, and we scattered, trying to avoid its deadly grasp. But it was too fast, too powerful. It picked us off one by one, and we could do nothing to stop it. As I watched my comrades fall, I knew that we were no match for this unknown creature. It was as if it was a being from another world, a being that was not meant to be in our realm. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, it vanished into the trees. We were left alone in the haunted forest once again, shaken and traumatized by the attack of the unknown creature. Chapter 6. The Search for Answers We retreated to a small clearing, our hearts pounding with fear and adrenaline. We knew that we had to regroup, to figure out what we were up against. We had to find some answers before it was too late. We searched the area, looking for any clues as to what had just attacked us. But there was nothing. No footprints, no signs of struggle, nothing that could help us understand what we were dealing with. We were at a loss, but we knew that we couldn't just give up. We had to keep moving forward, no matter what. We had a mission to complete, and we couldn't let this unknown creature stop us. As we resumed our journey through the forest, we kept our eyes and ears open, searching for any sign of danger. The whispers in the wind had stopped, but we knew that we couldn't let our guard down. It was then that we stumbled upon an old cabin, tucked away in a clearing. It looked abandoned, but we approached it cautiously, weapons at the ready. As we entered the cabin, we were greeted by an eerie silence. But as we searched the dusty, cobweb-covered rooms, we found something that made our blood run cold. A book, written in an ancient language, filled with strange symbols and diagrams. 
None of us could read the language, but we knew that it was something powerful, something that could explain the strange happenings in the forest. We took the book with us, hoping to find someone who could translate it. As we continued our journey through the haunted forest, we knew that we were getting closer to the answers we so desperately sought. But we also knew that we were running out of time. The unknown creature was still out there, waiting for us. And we knew that we had to be ready when it struck again. Chapter 7. The Strange Ritual We continued deeper into the forest, the weight of the ancient book heavy in our packs. The whispers in the wind had returned, but now they were clearer, as if they were guiding us towards something. After hours of hiking, we stumbled upon an old stone altar, surrounded by strange symbols and markings. We recognized them from the book, and we knew that we had stumbled upon something ancient and powerful. We set up camp nearby, and as the night fell, we studied the book and the markings on the altar. We pieced together a strange ritual, one that would allow us to communicate with the spirits of the forest. It was a risky move, but we knew that it was our only chance to understand the strange happenings in the forest. We followed the ritual to the letter, calling upon the spirits to reveal themselves to us. At first, nothing happened, but then, a strange mist began to rise from the ground, swirling and dancing around us. The whispers in the wind grew louder, and we could feel a presence in the air, something ancient and powerful. And then, we saw it. A figure, cloaked in shadow, emerged from the mist. Its eyes glowed like embers, and its voice echoed in our minds. You have trespassed in our domain, it said. What is it that you seek? We explained our mission, and the creature listened. It seemed to consider our words for a moment, and then it spoke again. The forest is ancient, and its secrets are many. You have awakened something that was better left undisturbed, but I can give you the answers you seek. Follow me. We followed the creature deeper into the forest, through paths that we never knew existed. And then, we saw it. The heart of the forest, a massive tree that towered over everything else. The creature approached the tree, and then it spoke a word in the ancient language. The tree began to glow, and then it opened up, revealing a chamber inside. The creature motioned for us to enter, and we stepped inside. There, we found something that we never could have imagined. A portal, leading to another world. A world of darkness and horror, a world that we were not meant to see. Chapter 8 Through the Portal We stood there, staring at the portal in awe and fear. We knew that this was something beyond our understanding, something that could be the end of us all. But we also knew that we had come too far to turn back now. We had to face whatever lay beyond that portal, no matter how terrifying it may be. Without hesitation, we stepped through the portal and into the unknown. The world on the other side was nothing like we had ever seen before. It was a world of darkness and shadow, of twisted trees and malevolent creatures. As we walked through the strange landscape, we felt as if we were being watched, as if every shadow held a hidden danger. We moved cautiously, weapons at the ready, and yet we knew that we were not prepared for what lay ahead. As we moved deeper into this dark world, we saw something that froze us in our tracks. A massive structure, like a fortress built of bones and flesh, looming in the distance. It was unlike anything we had ever seen before, and we knew that it was the source of the evil that had plagued the forest. We knew that we had to destroy it, no matter the cost. We moved towards the fortress, our hearts pounding with fear and determination. But as we drew closer, we were met with a fierce resistance. Horrific creatures, spawned from the darkness, attacked us from every side. We fought bravely, but we were outnumbered and outmatched. Just when we thought that all was lost, a figure emerged from the shadows, a figure we recognized from our encounter with the spirits of the forest. It was the creature that had led us here, and it had brought reinforcements. Together, we fought our way through the hordes of monsters, pushing ever closer to the fortress. And then, we saw it the heart of the fortress, a pulsating mass of flesh and bone that seemed to be alive. 
Without hesitation, we attacked it, using all of our strength and skill. The creature that had led us here fought alongside us, and we knew that we were finally making progress. And then, it happened. The fortress began to collapse, crumbling to the ground. We knew that we had succeeded, that we had destroyed the source of the evil that had plagued the forest. We emerged from the portal, victorious but shaken. We knew that we had faced something that few others ever would, and we knew that we would never be the same again. Chapter 9 The Aftermath We stood there, watching as the fortress crumbled to the ground, its dark power dissipating into the ether. We were exhausted, battered and bruised from our battle with the forces of darkness. But we were also victorious. We had destroyed the source of the evil that had plagued the forest, and we had saved countless lives in the process. As we made our way back to our base camp, we talked about what had happened. We tried to make sense of the things we had seen, the horrors we had faced. For some of us, it was too much. They had seen things that would haunt them for the rest of their lives, things that they would never be able to forget. But for others, it was a moment of triumph. They had faced their fears head on and emerged victorious. They had proven to themselves that they were capable of incredible things, even in the face of overwhelming odds. But no matter how we felt about what had happened, one thing was clear. Our lives would never be the same again. We had seen things that few others ever would, and we had faced dangers that most could never imagine. As we returned to our base camp, we were greeted with cheers and applause. Our fellow soldiers had heard of our victory, and they were overjoyed to see us return safely. But we could see that something had changed in their eyes. They knew that we had faced something that they never would, and they knew that we would never be the same again. In the days and weeks that followed, we tried to return to our normal lives. But it was impossible. We had been changed by our experience, and we could never go back to who we were before. Some of us left the army, unable to continue fighting after what we had seen. Others stayed, determined to continue the fight against the forces of darkness, knowing that they could make a difference. But no matter what path we chose, we all carried the memories of our battle with us. We had faced something that few others ever would, and we had emerged victorious. But at what cost? We would never be able to forget the horrors we had faced, and we would never be able to return to the lives we had known before. We had stepped through the portal and into the unknown, and we had been forever changed by what we had seen. Chapter 10 The Return to the Forest it had been months since our victory over the fortress, but the memories of our battle still haunted us. We had tried to move on with our lives, but there was something about that forest that drew us back. We knew that there were still pockets of darkness in the forest, and we couldn't let them go unchecked. So we gathered our gear and set out once again into the forest. The forest was different now. It was no longer shrouded in darkness, and the trees no longer seemed to whisper malevolently. It was as if the forest had been reborn, cleansed of the evil that had once consumed it. We moved cautiously through the trees, scanning the shadows for any sign of danger. But as we walked, we began to notice something strange. The trees were different now. They seemed more alive, more vibrant than before. The leaves rustled softly in the breeze, and the branches swayed gently in the wind. And then we saw it. A glimmer of light ahead of us, shining through the trees. We quickened our pace, drawn towards the light like moths to a flame. And as we drew closer, we saw that it was a clearing in the forest, bathed in sunlight. In the center of the clearing was a tree, unlike any we had ever seen before. It was enormous, with thick branches that stretched up towards the sky. As we approached the tree, we felt a strange sensation, as if the tree was somehow alive, pulsing with energy. And then we saw her. A woman, standing at the base of the tree, her face illuminated by the sunlight filtering through the leaves. She looked up as we approached, and we saw that her eyes were the same shade of green as the leaves on the tree. We didn't know what to do. We had expected to find darkness in the forest, not something so beautiful and unexpected. 
The woman smiled at us, and we felt a warmth spreading through our bodies, banishing the memories of our battles. And then she spoke, her voice like music. Welcome to my forest, she said. I have been waiting for you. We didn't know who she was or what she wanted, but we knew that we had stumbled upon something incredible, something that would change our lives forever. Chapter 11 The Fairy Queen The woman introduced herself as the Fairy Queen. She explained that she was the guardian of the forest, tasked with protecting it from those who sought to do it harm. We were skeptical at first, but as she spoke, we felt a sense of truth in her words. It was as if the forest itself was confirming her story. The Fairy Queen invited us to sit with her at the base of the tree. As we sat, she told us stories of the forest, of the creatures that called it home, and of the battles that had been fought there. As we listened, we began to understand the true nature of the forest. It wasn't just a place of darkness and evil, but a place of magic and wonder. The Fairy Queen also spoke of the darkness that still lingered in the forest, of the creatures that still threatened its peace. She asked us to help her rid the forest of these dark forces, and we agreed. And so we spent the next few weeks traveling deeper into the forest, searching for the pockets of darkness that still existed. It wasn't easy. We faced creatures that we had never seen before, ones that seemed to come straight out of our nightmares. But with the help of the Fairy Queen, we were able to overcome them. As we worked, we began to see the true beauty of the forest. We saw the way that the sunlight filtered through the trees, the way that the animals moved through the underbrush. And we began to see the Fairy Queen in a different light. She was no longer just a mysterious woman, but a powerful ally, a force of nature. As our journey came to an end, we returned to the clearing where we had first met the Fairy Queen. She thanked us for our help, and we thanked her for showing us the true nature of the forest. And then, as quickly as she had appeared, she was gone, leaving us alone in the clearing, surrounded by the beauty of the forest. We knew that we would never forget our journey into the forest, nor the lessons that we had learned there. The forest would always hold a special place in our hearts, a reminder of the magic and wonder that still exists in the world. Chapter 12 The Final Battle Our journey through the forest had been long and arduous, but it had also been enlightening. We had faced the darkness that lurked within the trees and had emerged victorious. But we knew that our journey was not yet over. We had received word that the enemy was gathering their forces, preparing for a final assault. We knew that we had to act quickly if we were to stand any chance of stopping them. With the help of the Fairy Queen, we formulated a plan of attack. We would divide our forces into three groups, each attacking a different point of the enemy's line. The battle was intense, the air filled with the sounds of gunfire and explosions. But we fought with all our might, determined to protect the forest and our fellow soldiers. It was a grueling battle, with losses on both sides. But as we fought, we could feel the tide of the battle turning in our favor. Finally, after hours of fighting, we emerged victorious. The enemy had been defeated, their forces scattered to the wind. We gathered together, surveying the aftermath of the battle. The forest was scarred, trees and underbrush ripped apart by the violence of the fight. But we knew that it would recover, that it would once again be a place of beauty and wonder. As we made our way back to camp, we reflected on the journey that had brought us to this point. We had faced darkness and fear, but we had also discovered the true nature of the forest and the strength of our own spirits. And Chapter 13 The Aftermath The battle was over, and we had emerged victorious. But the cost had been high. Many of our comrades had lost their lives in the fight, and the forest itself had been scarred by the violence. We spent the next few days tending to the wounded and burying the dead. It was a solemn time, as we reflected on the sacrifice that had been made in the name of freedom. But as we worked, we also began to see signs of hope. The forest was beginning to heal, new growth emerging from the scorched earth. 
and we began to see the beauty of the forest once again. The way the sunlight filtered through the leaves, the sounds of the animals moving through the underbrush. We knew that it would take time for the forest to fully recover, but we also knew that it would. And in that knowledge, we found a sense of peace. As we looked around at our fellow soldiers, we also saw a sense of camaraderie that had not been there before. We had faced the darkness together, and in doing so, we had formed bonds that would last a lifetime. And we knew that we would never forget the lessons that we had learned in the forest. We had faced our fears and emerged stronger for it. And we knew that we would carry that strength with us, no matter where our journeys might take us next. As we prepared to leave the forest and return to our homes, we took one last look around, taking in the beauty and the majesty of the trees around us. And we knew that even though we were leaving, a part of us would always remain in the forest, a part of the natural world that we had fought so hard to protect. Chapter 14, Return to Civilization. Leaving the forest was bittersweet. We had grown to love the beauty and simplicity of life within its confines, but we also knew that we had to return to civilization, to our families, and to our duties as soldiers. As we emerged from the forest, we were greeted by the noise and chaos of the outside world. Cars honking, people rushing about their daily business. It was a stark contrast to the peace and tranquility that we had grown accustomed to. But we also felt a sense of gratitude for the lives that we had been able to protect. We had fought for something greater than ourselves, and in doing so, we had discovered a sense of purpose and meaning that we had not known before. As we made our way back to our homes, we found that the experience had changed us in ways that we could not have imagined. We had a newfound appreciation for the natural world and a deep respect for those who fight to protect it. We also found that we had a greater sense of compassion and understanding for our fellow human beings. We had seen the darkness that lay within us all, but we had also seen the light and the hope that could be found in the most unlikely of places. And so we returned to our lives, forever changed by the experience of the forest. But we also knew that we would never forget the lessons that we had learned there, and that we would carry those lessons with us, always. For the forest had taught us that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope. And that, with courage and determination, we can overcome any obstacle that lies in our path. Chapter 15 The legend lives on years past, and we moved on with our lives. But the memory of the forest and the battles we fought there never left us. In fact, the legend of the forest grew, becoming a symbol of hope and courage for those who heard our story. People came from far and wide to visit the forest, to walk its trails, and to marvel at its beauty. And as they walked, they would tell their children and grandchildren the story of the brave soldiers who had fought to protect it. And so the legend lived on, a testament to the power of the human spirit and the importance of standing up for what is right. For we had learned that the true heroes of the world are not those who seek fame or fortune, but those who fight for something greater than themselves. Those who are willing to put their lives on the line for a cause they believe in, no matter how great the odds against them may be. And so the legend of the forest continues to inspire new generations of people, reminding them of the bravery and sacrifice of those who came before. For the forest may have been scarred by our battles, but it had also been transformed by our love and dedication. And in that transformation, we had discovered a deeper sense of purpose and meaning than we could ever have imagined. And so, as we look back on our time in the forest, we know that we will always carry a part of it with us, a part of the natural world that we fought so hard to protect. And we know that even as the years pass and the memory of our battles fades, the legend of the forest will live on, a testament to the power of the human spirit and the enduring beauty of the natural world.